Hello and welcome to Lotus Bob's Garage. The question for today is, do you know what this is and what it has to do with this part here? Do you know what this part is? And this last part? Well, the answer to the first one is it's a piston. The second one is that it is a tappet guide. And the third piece is a tappet guide hold down device. So bonus points if you knew them all, but let's talk about the importance of them. Because if you want to see your car's engine go from this, which is the way the engine looked on my car when I first got it, to this, which is the way it looked when I finally got it in the car so I could start driving it, then I think that I've got something today that could be interesting for you. We are going to be talking about the pistons, the tappet guides, and the top end of the engine. So take a look at the piston that I've got here. Pretty gnarly. You'll see in the next uh, view as well that it's pretty banged up and, you know, gouges, things that just shouldn't be in a piston when you pull it out of an engine. So the question really became, what happened? What went wrong? Why was it like that? Here's a bit more of a close-up of the top surface of the engine, or, or piston, I should say. Uh, you can see that it's gouged and marred, filled with carbon deposits in the, the grooves, but those grooves shouldn't be there. Those chips and, and chunks should not be uh, like that at all. It should be smooth and beautiful. Well, my friends, this is the culprit. This is a tappet guide. And what happens is, on the intake side, they, they work themselves loose and they, they, they wiggle up and they start, start to spin a little bit and the uh, camshaft as it's rotating around actually gouges bits of metal out of the uh, top of uh, surface of that uh, uh, tappet guide which makes it just you know shred pieces of metal into the engine itself. Not a good thing. Let's take a minute to look at uh, what I think are some of the most beautiful drawings that are made, the illustrations that are in the actual Jaguar fa factory manual. Uh, I've always appreciated the British uh, factory manuals because they just have such beautiful, uh, inspired drawings by craftsmen, uh, pen and ink drawings, uh, not computer rendered or anything because these things were done in the 50s and 60s, but beautiful drawings. This is a cross section of the engine itself and you can see uh, the orientation of the pistons, the cylinders, the cylinder heads, the valves, the valve guides, the cams. It's a really a nice view, I think. Here's a view that shows how the tappet guide fits into the cylinder head itself uh, with the valve spring and the uh, adjusting shim and the tappet uh, cover, the, the actual tappet that goes over it and the camshaft above. And you can see I've, I've pointed with, with a, an arrow there at what the, the tappet guide itself is. It's pressed into the aluminum. It's steel that's pressed into the aluminum. And what happens, expansion, crack, contraction, whatnot, uh, it works its way loose. And that's what causes the damage. It's pretty common on uh, XK engines, actually. An example of what some of the damage can look like, uh, depending on uh, how severe uh, or exactly uh, what has happened, but it can it gouges the upper side of the combustion chamber as well. Here's another picture of a co combustion chamber that's totally whacked out because of the metal shavings that went in there. Uh, I didn't take pictures of mine when it happened. I wish I, I had, but it, at the time I wasn't thinking of it, but mine was even worse than those. This is how the combustion chamber inside of an, a JAG engine is supposed to look. Smoothly machined, the valves you can see are uh, inserted, the, the spark plug would come through the other hole there, but nice and smooth uh, is the way they come from the factory. So this is what the repair looks like when uh, you have to fix a cylinder head combustion chamber that's been all gouged out. They take, uh, and they heliarc, which is aluminum welding, uh, the heliarc uh, material into the areas where 
the uh, cylinder head has been damaged, and then they use uh, machine tools to uh, machine the head back to the proper dimensions uh, so it's a spherical uh, head. Actually, you know, it's interesting because before Chrysler had the, uh, the Hemis and all those kind of things, the Jag's always been a Hemi engine. So after you put the uh, engine back together and you're uh, starting to work on the top side of it, you've got the, the uh, valves in, you've got the tappet guides in, you've got the taps, tappets in, then what you do is you put that tappet guide retaining piece, uh, you actually drill holes into the, into the head and put self-tapping screws in so that it holds those uh, retaining or holds those uh, tappet guides and prevents them from working their way out. Here are a couple of views of properly installed uh, tappet guides uh, retaining uh, plates that are put in on the, uh, the intake side there. It really makes good sense. The parts aren't very expensive when you're rebuilding the engine. Uh, you, you know, even if you didn't have any evidence that you had had a problem with it before, it makes very good sense to uh, put those little retaining devices on. Here's another view of properly installed retaining devices. And you can really get an idea that they just uh, fit over the uh, outer edge of the retain of the tappet guide. So they don't interfere with the actual tappet moving up and down. So on to pistons. Yeah, this was the number one piston on my engine. And for those of us uh, JAG enthusiasts, we know that the number one cylinder is the cylinder that's closest to the uh, fire, uh, the firewall closest to the uh, 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 the flywheel. Uh, so that was the number one cylinder that just totally got hammered. Going back to the Jaguar manual here, you can see that there were two uh, types of pistons, two uh, grades of piston that were uh, 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 put into the engines. Uh, whether it's a, a dash eight for the eight to one compression pistons or a dash nine for the nine to one compression pistons. And you find that dash number next to your engine number. So if you look on the serial uh, uh, cylinder head itself uh, towards the forward end of it, you'll see your, your engine number dash something. If it's a dash nine, then your car has da uh, uh, nine to one pistons in it. If it's a dash eight, it has eight to one uh, pistons in it. My car came from uh, Europe. So it had uh, the dash eight for the eight to one uh, pistons in it. I guess the gas wasn't quite as uh, good, so they couldn't run high, uh, the high compression uh, pistons over in Europe. And the nine to ones were typical in the US. When I rebuilt the engine here, I put the nine to one pistons in. The cylinder head is, is actually the same. There's no real difference between the, the eight and the nine serial uh, cylinder head itself. It's just a question of the, uh, the pistons. So here's a nice brandy new nine to one compression piston uh, ready to go into the uh, engine. Uh, when I put mine in, I also used file to fit uh, uh, piston rings. When I've done engines in the past and I've done a lot of engine rebuilds, uh, many of them come with piston rings that are properly sized and gapped. And by the gap, I mean that, that when, the, when the ring is inside the cylinder itself, the gap between the two ends of the rings uh, are undersized when you buy them and then you have to file them to get to the proper clearance. Of course after you get the engine uh, reassembled uh, you need to paint it. Uh, the 3.8s uh, typically had a gold, there's different names for it. Is it gold? Is it pumpkin? Is it orange? I, I don't know that I got the 100% perfect color on mine uh, but I got something that was uh, uh, I felt was pretty darn close. Uh, it's a uh, uh, an engine paint, of course, because you have to make sure that it can stand with, withstand the temperatures. I got the engine all assembled, and it sat on the, uh, the engine stand for a couple of years. Yeah, I kind of ran out of gas a little bit, and uh, it sat there waiting for me to finish it. Yep, the car sat around for almost a couple of years until I finally got motivated to get the car going. Uh, I will be putting together other videos that shows uh, various steps uh, of the way. The car has been on the road for 12 years. So these uh, pictures and, and stories that I'm telling are actually from quite a while ago. 
But nevertheless, uh, they're here for you. I hope you like them. Uh, let me know. Uh, I will be making more. So thanks for watching.